We're so proud to have all these individuals here tonight. Um, let's give them a warm welcome. We're going to go ahead and start off with a slideshow over here. If you look to the right, and uh, Ms. Betty Williams is going to uh, start us off. Uh, basically, we're going to go through some of the pictures, and then later on, we're going to have some topics that they're going to discuss, um, including what it was like, um, obviously, growing up in Auburn, um, what were their favorite places um, to eat, um, what was it like to, to be a teenager, and where was you at, um, what are the different things, what are the different hangouts um, you would attend. So uh, we're going to go ahead and get started with Ms. Williams. I think all of you can hear me. I, I don't like that microphone. Can you hear me on the back? <laughs> Once I was accused of teaching a class in two buildings, so my voice is uh, carrying. This was my nursery school. I was in the first nursery school in the state of Alabama. This is in 1928. I was three years old. Uh, by the way, I'm seven. I mean, not 75. I, that was 10 years ago. I'm 85. <laughs> so, uh, I'm, I'm on the front row. Oh, he, he didn't give me time. There's some other folks in there you might know. Martin Beck is in there. Uh, the uh, Hay, who were Presbyterian ministers, were in there. Uh, the couple of uh, Bird Lee and his sister, the Episcopal minister, are in there, and um, uh, I could identify all of them, but I won't take that time. All right. Chris? That is because I have a postcard that says it was Lee County High School. If you uh, are familiar with Auburn, as most of you are, it's now the middle building in the junior high school area out there. Uh, we all started to the first grade in the left-hand side. We went through grammar school on that side. The center part was the auditorium, the cafeteria, and the library. And then we moved over to the right-hand side, and that was the junior and senior high school. I started in the first grade on the left, classroom I ended in the senior homeroom in the right hand side I did the entire 12 years now my class was the first class to go entirely through school in the new building we were not the first class to graduate but we started in the first grade when it was new and we uh, finished 12 years later there <laughs> this was our high school band, and if you will notice, we have capes. The parents had to uh, provide the white trousers and white shirts. Uh, I played in the band, and uh, the girls wore skirts at that time, but that was the only uniform that was available, was a cape with a little cap. We rode bicycles a lot. I'll talk about that later. There we are on some bicycles. Okay. We had dances in the old school, which was on Opelika Road, where the uh, rec center is now. And, uh, and the floor shook. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> okay. Uh, about the only entertainment in town was the Tiger Theater. We went to the movies. Uh, and this is a shot with people lined up buying tickets to go to the movies. I'll talk about that a little more later, too. Okay. Our favorite place to eat was the chicken house. Do, do some of you remember the chicken house? The chicken house was in Opelika. It was out close to where the new school and Southern Union buildings are. It was in a fork in the road, and it looked just that bad. But let me tell you, on the right-hand side, there was the best chicken you could imagine. And we all went to the chicken house until they tore it down to build a new road. That's the old Pitts Hotel. It is still downtown, but it's apartments now. 
and uh, there was a dress shop on the left, and on the right was a, uh, a small restaurant, and I don't remember the name of it. Do any of you? You don't know. It's a hotel restaurant at one time, but also Hitchcock's had it. Hitchcock's, I think, yeah. is what. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Did that ever become the sirloin? Was, was that, was, I remember the sirloin, and I was wondering, did, did that grow out of that same restaurant location? I think it may have been in the same location, but I think that was closed for what was that? the yeah. sirloin, he said. Yeah, I wasn't here when that. I think it was a little further down, coming this way. That's a shot of Chihuahua. That was our favorite entertainment in the summertime, and that's down below the dam with the falls coming down, and you can see we're pretending to be bathing views. <laughs> That's, that's okay. yours. Yeah, yes. that's the trailer. Okay. This is Prather's Lake in uh, the, I guess the late 30s, early 40s. And uh, that was where I spent most of my time growing up. We lived right up the hill there. At, at this particular time, it was outside the city, but uh, we still had a lot of townspeople come and swim. And my husband was a lifeguard then. And taught me to swim. <laughs> <laughs> and was a lifeguard at Chihuahua. Yeah. And this is my kindergarten class. I was in Ms. Meager's kindergarten. And her house and the building that the kindergarten was in, which is behind it, is still on Glen. It's Cedar Shakes now. But uh, that's where, uh, I don't know how many years she taught kindergarten, but there were a number of classes before mine and a lot of classes after mine, too. Okay. Our next topic that we're actually going to cover is we're going to ask you, uh, Mr. Sims, to start off by telling us a little bit about uh, what it was like as a teenager and uh, what would you do, I guess, on weekends as a teenager and what were some of the things to do um, recreationally here in Auburn. And I do have to apologize. This is a great uh, venue for this. It's, it's gorgeous and it's beautiful, but our acoustics aren't too good. So if you don't mind, Ms. Williams, we are going to, uh, to pass the mic around if that's okay. <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> did, did anybody have trouble hearing me? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going to apologize for uh, my voice. Uh, I'm sucking something, and I'm going to keep on doing this, trying to keep them so I won't start coughing. Um, Let's see a show of hands. How many of you grew up in Auburn? Yeah. We're up against a tough audience, yeah. I can tell you that. Well, you know, there's no reason to tell you, but you definitely and certainly are among God's chosen few. <laughs> I found that out when I came to Auburn after I finished the sixth grade in Corvallis, Oregon. Now, down here they call it Oregon, A-R-G-N, but it was Oregon, <laughs> and I talked like an Oregonian. And uh, it didn't do me much good when I was with these kids down here. They worked me over pretty well. Uh, but what, we, what did we do? We, we were an outdoor crowd, and particularly in the summer. And, and uh, when we were younger, we played the usual games. And they played everywhere, you know, red light, green light, side and go seat, and those things. And as we got older, we, we got bicycles. And a lot of the boys in particular, rode bicycles everywhere around here and you could start about I guess at about age 11 or 12 a few mamas uh, put the brakes on some of that age but a lot of us could just get on a bicycle and go uh, leave in the morning in the summer and come back maybe maybe we'd come back for lunch and maybe we wouldn't but we were supposed to tell them if we weren't coming back for lunch so no I'm going to stop over at somebody's house and get a sandwich or something but we'd ride out to Chihuahua Park the road wasn't paved but there were a bunch of us that did that. And I think of all the places, uh, all the things in, in my life anyhow at Auburn, Chalka Park would be way up there toward the top of, of things to do. And I could, since I was 11 when I came, I could almost do them from the time I came until I went into service. I could go to Chihuahua Park and I spent a lot of time there. An awful lot of time, I worked there one summer, but uh, uh, that and another thing, it, uh, how do we spend a day? Uh, Tiger Theater on Sunday in particular, 
the Sunday show, the mat they had two matinees and two evening shows, and or one evening show maybe, but two or one, I don't remember. Well, anyhow, they they filled the Tiger Theater, and they had a lot of we had more first first run movies than I think any place in Alabama. Maybe Birmingham might have had more, but we had uh, most of the first uh, first run movies, and of course. As you, you you all know this, but I mean Auburn, the, the, the town was, was tied to the gown over there, and with the boys and the girls to a really great extent. What happened at the university was it was our show too. We were there. We 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 uh, went to the lectures and the the good stuff, the brainy stuff, the poets and the dancers and this sort of thing. But we also many of the boys were really. Uh, knocked out on the sports events. And I went to every sporting event they had, I guess, for about six years. I went to everything. And, and uh, you'd always find uh, at the pep rallies, if you looked around or some of the pictures at pep rallies, you'll find some teenage kids, some of them barefooted if, it's in the, if it isn't too, too far into the fall uh, at the pep rallies. And one of my favorite pep rallies was in the it was in in Langdon Hall, and had it full, and we used it in a book, and the the the, the picture, uh, the caption says there's only four women in that picture that we could we could definitely tell were women. We put it under glass, and so this the pep rallies were pretty much boys, I guess, when they were held in Langdon Hall, and maybe outside the women had their shot at it too. But I I know there were lots of women that went on the parade part of the pep rallies and that sort of thing. But that pep rally had a picture of a little 12-year-old uh, kid, a little black-haired kid, and, and uh, he, was a, he was about five feet tall, and it was me. And I was in the pep rally over to one side, and my partner in this book found uh, that, and he said, this is a great picture we got to And I looked at the picture, and I said, well, it's just a picture in pep lane and all, but it's a good one, we'll run it. And he said, you're not looking close enough. And then I found my picture. So that's my chief claim to fame was I made that, uh, that picture. But football and basketball were really big at Auburn University. And the high school, we only had, when I was there, and Betty might change it, but we only had two sports, football and basketball. Oh, and we had, we had tennis in 40, 41, I think, or 39, 40, in Winterford Hill, Boyd was on that win that boys tennis team. She, she, was, she was number four, number five on that tennis team, and uh, she could beat uh, a couple of the guys. And, and she'd play one match, and then one of them would beat her, and she wouldn't play the next match match when they went out and that sort of thing. But uh, uh, I guess that that uh, oh one thing about the the old gym. Uh, the old alumni gym, Sam was the janitor there, and Sam would uh, leave a window open on Friday evening on the second floor. And we would actually have somebody crazy enough to scale. You only had about that much indent, you know, as it went up the, the brick. Scale that thing and get up there and go in the window and come down and open the door and we play basketball on Fridays and Saturdays <laughs> and uh, Sometimes the door would be open. We'd have a bonus. Nobody would have to scale I never I was afraid of heights. I wasn't about to climb up that thing, <laughs> but uh, This went on probably for two or three years and uh, I guess the reason that we, we there was no problem with it was There was no vandalism and we cleaned up uh, you know, we didn't. We left it like we found it. So uh, Sam was pretty good with us. We give him a few cigarettes once in a while. That guy took care of that. So somebody else. You, you need to say that the reason you did that was there was no basketball arena at Auburn High School, and they played their football games on the college field. That's true. And the the uh, and the beautiful thing we had behind the school was uh, a kind of a gravel pit that we called playground. <laughs> and you, you know, if you fell, you got a you got a knee skint because there was gravel everywhere. We had we had two basketball courts set up down there. They weren't full size; they were about half size. But they they had concrete on them, as I recall. 
Maybe not, but, but uh, they, were, they didn't have gravel anyhow. Okay. Well, I came along a few years after Jack, and uh, I guess my big thing growing up is I lived out in the country. I grew up at the corner of Glen and Dean, and at that time, the city limits was at Summer Hill Road at John Sadler's house. And so when I got to come to town, that was the big thing. And my aunt lived right across the street here, so I would ride my bike to go see my aunt and walk the streets of Auburn. And uh, the biggest thing doing Auburn was play pool. We did have a bowling at it, but I couldn't pick up the bowling balls when I was little. But there was a fellow named Crow Wright that worked in one of the pool halls. And uh, he would get us a couple of Coca-Cola crates and we could slide that around the table and reach to the, to the top and see the balls. And so that was, was our fun. Of course, the movies, which we call the picture show, we went to and uh, it was uh, the full gamut. Since there wasn't any TV, we got a newsreel, we got comics, and then we'd get the feature film. But we, uh, I know for years we paid a dime and then when we got to be about 14 or 15, Mr. Coates decided we were over 12 and we had to start paying a quarter. <laughs> but uh, that was the, the big fun on the weekends. Uh, I guess the, uh, I know one of the, I remember as I got a little older, uh, two of university professors had one of the pool halls downtown, Claude Layfield and Bill Winder, and they uh, had, they sold coins, and one of my hobbies was collecting coins, and so I had a good excuse to get in the pool hall to look at all the coins they had for sale, and, and that was one of our big places to play, and of course, as I got in junior high, then I turned the streets over to little Billy Ham, and, and he took over in fine style after that. But the other thing growing up that was big in our life is uh, in 49, Coach Umbaugh started Little League Baseball. And so this was our first really organized uh, recreation for younger than the junior high and high school kids. And uh, that went on to uh, several years after I got out of Little League. The, well, the next year after I got out, they went to the Little League World Series. An Auburn team did when, when Arnold Umbaugh and Ted Wilson and Jim Neal and some of them were playing. Uh, so, but I guess that pretty well covers what, uh, what I did growing up. And when we were, when our, our group was coming along, we didn't have any organized city recreation that I know of. Do you know, know of anybody? I don't no, there was none. Uh, Ms. Lipscomb. Oh, I've been so busy listening to y'all, I don't know what I've got to say. <laughs> the main thing I remember about growing up in Auburn was Gaystrop. When we, when we moved to Auburn, and we had the most wonderful neighbors all up and down the street. And, and our parents didn't worry about us at all because we could just roam anyway and we were safe and no one ever thought anything could happen to it. And it didn't, did it? No, it didn't. <laughs> no, it didn't. <laughs> it didn't really and Wesley much. broke his arm. Yeah, Wesley broke his arm. <laughs> but uh, it was a wonderful place for children to grow up and we've got great memories of all of those things. We lived next door to the Grimes and this is my brother. I guess most of y'all know Wesley. We all grew up together, and uh, the only bad thing about growing up then was when Billy Randolph came, and he was so mean. <laughs> 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 and he, I had a Shirley Temple doll that I was so proud of, and he beheaded it. <laughs> he thought it was a Marie Antoinette or something. And I've never forgiven him. And then I find out later he was, became a surgeon in Miami or somewhere, and I thought, that's the last doctor I would ever <laughs> get around. I don't know 
what I've happened to him, do you? I don't know. What he he was older than you are though. He was a year older than I. Yeah. I think. Yeah. So he he was a lot older. <laughs> yeah, a lot. <laughs> but um, we had some had wonderful times and and oh Miss Collis who lived on the corner of right up there. Yeah. Got it. Same. She always made cookies, and we always went to see Miss Collis, and she would have a little plate of cookies for us every time we'd go by the. So we made it a stop, regular stop, when we'd run around the neighborhood. She'd always have cookies for us. But she was like a Norman Rockwell mother with a white, well, white hair. <laughs> 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 but uh, we do have a lot of wonderful memories, and it was a safe place, and the parents could just turn us loose because we couldn't have gotten lost. Everybody knew who everybody's children were, so it was a safe place, and it was a wonderful place for little children. I have a lot of happy memories of it. We used to have Tom Thumb weddings, yeah. uh, and uh, John Lowry was the tallest one in our crowd, so he was always the groom. And no, I think sometimes he was the preacher when, <laughs> when we'd have weddings. Anyway, we just made up our own activities and things that we wanted to do. And Gay Street was one of the most beautiful streets in the world in, in the 30s. Uh, when I was 11 and walked barefooted, I could walk from Sanford Avenue to the Presbyterian Church in the shade uh, without burning my feet, except where you cross the street. I mean, we had, that, that was a beautiful tree line street. And there were beautiful houses and beautiful houses. Yeah. Up, up and down the street. Some of them were boarding houses yeah. where the college students would go to eat, but they were beautiful houses. But if you read um, Warren McCord's column in the paper this morning, <laughs> he reminded us that change has to take place. And he was talking about his hometown and going back and finding houses boarded up and so on. And I think about our beautiful houses on Gay Street, uh -huh. and they would probably be a shambles now, boarded up and so on, if they had not been torn down. Yeah. So maybe we have something to be grateful for with some of the changes. Okay. Okay. Next, let's uh, go ahead and talk about some of the favorite places to eat when you were uh, growing up. What were some of the places you'd go to on a, on a Saturday or Sunday? Um, you know, if you could really be sure where we where would you go? Mr. Brady, we're going to start off with you. If you don't mind, hold, hold the mic a little bit closer. Okay. Thank you. I'm not sure there was anywhere we went that was a tree. Well, mine was in our junior department. <laughs> yeah. One of those. But uh, my mother uh, worked in Opelika and she was usually late getting home so we ate out a lot and when when i was coming along there was a, a cafeteria called Athey's cafeteria and it's a bar now but uh, it's where the old war eagle theater used to be the building out in front of the war eagle theater and that was a good place to eat but then when they built the student union building a tier there that was the the best place to eat and I have a lot of good memories of that because that was uh, one of my first jobs. I uh, served banquets and worked on the serving line at the uh, union building and we had a choice. We could take uh, a meal ticket which was worth 95 cents an hour or we got paid 35 cents an hour in cash. So I took meal tickets and sold them to mother for 95 cents, and it was one of the best jobs I ever had. But, uh, I guess as we got uh, older and uh, I, I guess teenagers, uh, the fun places we had, you know, one thing about Auburn at that time, downtown pretty well closed up at five except for the pool halls and the, and the movie theater, so there weren't many places downtown. But uh, when we got in junior high and, and on up, there was, uh, Dismukes had a dairy bar that was right across the railroad uh, on uh, 
Gay Street, uh, John's Cleaners were there and just play us that. And they had the best foot long hot dogs in town. And I talked to a friend of mine the other day and he said, yeah. He said, I can remember every Friday and Saturday night we'd go to the Dairy Queen, get a foot long hot dog and go park. <laughs> but I, don't, I don't know much about that. Uh, because, but, uh, the, you know, the other things is we went to high school, Stoker's opened, and, and we went there. The Bonanza Burger was uh, the, one of the early big uh, hamburger joints, and, uh, and Deerland was on, on the other side of uh, Opelika Road. And I guess that, uh, that were the main places for me. We didn't eat out much. Uh, our mothers stayed at home, and most of them, and just looked after us. Uh, the only place I remember going was to the chicken house, which I've already introduced you to, and um, Markle's Drug Store. On Saturday <laughs> night, I went for a grilled cheese sandwich and a chocolate milkshake, and that was the best place to get something good to eat. <laughs> Ms. Lipscomb? Or Ms. Tommy, don't you want to come talk, too? Uh, would you like one? Yes, sir. All right. Mm -hmm. I'm coming shy and vegetable. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. In 1947, I got out of World War II and came to Auburn. I got out of the apartment over and over and over and over. He'd already been to Auburn for a year. And he said, when we get out, we're going to Auburn. I said, okay. I didn't know one school from the world. Came, came here, uh, no money. Folks didn't have anything. So I had a GI Bill. So I got a part-time job, worked some. Went to school, and uh, by having, not having any money to go to a football game, I love football. I always wanted to play football. I was too small. So somebody said, why don't you join the band? I said, I don't play an instrument. Well, the band director finds something for you to do. So I went to see him. And, uh, he said, what can you do? I said, I tore up a ton. <laughs> he said, what? <laughs> so I said, my sister made me learn how to throw a ton so I could throw it back and forth to her, you know, when we were going up in high school. He said, I'll tell you, you get another guy, you teach him how to throw up a ton, you're on the team. So we were the first and only Male twirlers <laughs> in the history of the band. It was in 1947. Well, I want to do something a little bit more than that. So uh, I said, well, somebody said, why don't you go for Chewy? I said, well, that's a good idea. Uh, Cause sister had done the Chewy. And so I went out to Chewy and, and made the squad in, in 1948. And that was the first year we started playing Alabama again after some 32 years or thereabouts. And oh, by the way, I lived at the Williams home when I first came to Auburn. Uh, Bob Ingram and I shared a room right. at your place. No, that was Robert's place. Robert's place. Right. Okay, Robert's place. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway. Uh, went up to Chile, made the squad, and uh, loved it. It was great. We had megaphones, all that stuff. We had to buy our pants, and the A Club bought our sweaters for us, so we could never, didn't have enough money to do all that. And uh, at the light department, we'll have to change now. Uh, so we did that uh, on Chile, and uh, 
then the next year, oh by the way, we played Alabama, they beat us 55 to zip in 1948. Terrible. I mean, we were really, we were taken down like you would believe. So the next year, we played them, and we beat them 14-13 in 1949. Very, very happy. Well, during that time, I don't remember winning many ball games at all in 40 and 49. So we had to do something to get the crowd, you know, all excited and everything. Nobody was coming to the pep rally. Nobody was coming to the game. So we came up with a new year. And, and we said, OK, get your hands up. Count on one, two, three. What's the good word? Whiskey! <laughs> Everybody carried a flask back then. <laughs> so when we had that yell, they all, you know. We, we had the happiest group. <laughs> and every, they wouldn't miss a bet, rather, they wouldn't miss a ball game. Because they were loaded. <laughs> Oh, would you try? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so we also want to do some unique things in pep rallies. And some of you remember this. Uh, the train came through all. That was the only mode of transportation. There were very few of us had cars. Most of us rode bicycles. So the train would come through. And what we did before the train got here, we had bucks of grease, and we greased the tracks. And so they came in from Atlanta somewhere. They came in, and they tried to stop, and they slid all the way through the town on them. So we did that just, just about every day for a while, and then we got to get a wind of it. <laughs> but then, uh, something that you couldn't do today, but uh, one time we had gallons of orange and blue paint with white paintbrushes. And as the train came through, we held the brushes out like this, had the orange and blue <laughs> stripes on every car. <laughs> We would have probably been put under the jail. <laughs> you know, it was that day. Anyway, we had fun. But we, we had a lot of, you know what I remember? Love girls, you know. And she's one of the prettiest ones that's ever been to all There's no doubt about it. <laughs> uh, they, the girls had to be in at 9.30 at night. They couldn't wear shorts. They had to wear uh, raincoats to cover the shorts. The sophomores uh, had to be in by 10.30. And the juniors and seniors had to be in by 11.30. I think I'm right, almost so. Anyway, that was the roughest. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine having a girl in the second third Well, what much would it be? Anyway. But uh, we had fun. Uh, and the eating places, uh, probably the uh, best ones were a lot of homes. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of ladies had, uh, were serving meals in the homes, and I ate them there. And um, and the grill, I always went to the grill. Um, not too much else. Any questions that you might have uh, about anything I sort of discussed? Uh, I think we're going to let Mr. Sims continue with, with some of the favorite places to eat too. Okay, thank you, Tom. All right, it's Tom Eaton. Uh, well, the Auburn Grill, he meant. 
mansion and the Pitts Hotel dining room were uh, open here when, when uh, I was around. And after that, one of the, my parents uh, would take visitors over to the Chattahoochee uh, River and go, go on uh, fish fries over there. There were several places that were along the river and you'd drive along parallel the river and then out on a, a road that, that would be built up and I guess it would, if the river got high enough it might go over it, but the river, <coughs> anyhow, and the place would be, a, it would just be a platform uh, with a screen box around it and a top on it. And that was a, that was a fish fry place and they had stuff in the, in the so you could stay out of the mosquitoes. There were zillions of mosquitoes along the river, of course. But we used to go over there and, and on the fish fries in the summer, uh, which was something good. But the Clements Hotel dining room in Opelika uh, in the 30s, the first air-conditioned public building in, uh, or not public building, public uh, well, building, yeah, in uh, Lee County was the grill and the second was the Clements Hotel. And uh, uh, it, it just seemed like it was hotter back then than it is now because we're, we're in the air conditioning all the time now, get out a little ways, get in the air conditioning. But then the grill was an oasis. Uh, we'd come up town and go in the grill for any, any reason, no reason at all, just to get out of the, out of the heat. But uh, the other places that, uh, that I wrote down were the dollhouse at the bottom of the hill down there that uh, uh, operated for a while and then it, for a good long while and, then it, and they, were, they had seats in there and a bar, a little bar and, and booths and a few seats, a few tables. Uh, and then when it converted to the slush, to the antifreeze, uh, you, you didn't go inside, you were outside. But uh, that was uh, a place you could get something to eat. Pierce Jackson had a little hole in the wall uh, on Magnolia Avenue between uh, College and, and Gay Street, and uh, was what kind of remember what was the kitchen? Shop. What was the kitchen called next to where down by? That's where? what I'm fixing. Sandwich to shop. It was courtesy kitchen. Courtesy, courtesy. Kitchen. Crazy woman. Ran, that that was uh, what was her name? <laughs> uh, uh, the, uh, the woman acted like she didn't want any customers. The husband would, you know, he'd be civil to you, but the woman was, she didn't, you, you want water? You know, you need a straw? I mean, it was like, it was, it was uh, but they did have real good, uh, they, had, they had good sandwiches and they had, had good chili. Uh, what, the dairy, the dairy place was halfway down on College Street down the hill going toward, on the, on the, on the west side. It was dairy, it was the, it was an, Dairyland Farms. Dairyland Farms, uh, yeah, and they had, uh, uh, they didn't, I don't think they had sandwiches, but they had terrific uh, stuff. And when Cullen Ward worked there in the early 40s, uh, uh, Cullen would take care of the high school football team. We'd go there for a milkshake after, after practice, and you could barely waddle out if you got, you got through eating one of the milkshakes. He fixed you for a quarter or 20 cents or whatever, whatever it was. He about bankrupt him, I guess. Uh, but I think, the, I think I would have to say uh, Jake's joint was here. Um, and, and then they had a place of, uh, of upstairs next to the, to, uh, on the College Street, just down from the corner. Um, Charlie the Bar to Laban's place and upstairs above that part of that was a restaurant for a little while. And also there was a pool hall up there for a little while. But I guess the favorite thing was my mother's, as or we, we didn't eat out. We just, I mean, our family didn't eat out much. And the, the, <coughs> what? There was one you have mentioned back in the 30s, was the Wild Cafeteria, which what? was about where Mellon is now. Yes. And right. uh, I think it closed down. Yeah, it was a good one. by Ms. Wild, she had that crazy son, George. And um, I think it closed down about the time World War II started, something in the early 40s. I think that's something. Yeah, I, I remember now that you mentioned it. I remember when the uh, Hungry Boy opened. That was one of my favorite places, but that was the early 60s. Mm -hmm. I figured, 
Dang. The hungry <laughs> Yeah, it was early, 60s. That's early? <laughs> yeah, it wasn't there when I left. Uh, well, I want to tell y'all, look, Wesley and I have to go to the this. We lived over on Cary Street, right near the stadium. Of course, the stadium wasn't anything like what it looks like now. It was just bleachers. And after every ball game, we could not wait for everybody to leave so we could scramble up under those bleachers and see if we could find any money. <laughs> we could find a floor or a dime or something. What did you? That was our best source of income that <laughs> Well, I go back to the dark ages and we had three or four grocery stores down um, College Street, one on Magnolia. We had two five and ten cent stores where you could actually buy something for five or ten cents. We had later one chain store, A and P came in, and that's where you got your food. You you A and P. Well, yeah, after they got yeah. here, but before that, and back in the Depression. The college people were paid in scrip. There was very little cash or money circulating, and many of the grocery stores accepted the scrip, and that was the way people in Auburn could eat, because they were able to pay with the state of Alabama scrip, which was later redeemed some, and I think some of the grocery stores had debts on them uh, owed to them when they finally had to close business later because of the competition. Uh, she mentioned the stadium, which was not like it is now. And when I was growing up, the uh, ROTC had um, an artillery company here. Uh, this was before World War II, obviously. <laughs> and uh, I learned how to ride horses on the military horses. The stable was over close to where the stadium and those facilities are. I can't identify it now because it's been changed so much. But um, we also had a polo team. Yes, we did have a, po a, polo uh, a polo team with the military horses. Um, I finished high school in the middle of World War II, and um, my husband immediately went to the Marines. But I want to tell you a little bit about him. He carried me to the Tiger Theater as a date most of the time when we were in high school. And uh, he made his money by being an usher at the Tiger Theater, by being a paper boy and delivering papers on his bicycle. And when we were in Auburn and went to a social gathering much later, one of the ladies said, I still remember your husband as the best paper boy I've ever had. And I thought, yeah, you know, here we are, mature people, and she remembers us as the best. If you've got to be remembered, though, it's good to be the best. Um, we had papers delivered right on the porch. We had milk delivered to our door, and um, Robert and his family, mentioned by you, had a cow behind their house in a big lot. Now, they lived on Sanford Avenue, two doors from the school. They had a cow, they had some chickens, and one of Robert's jobs as he uh, was in high school, he had to go home every afternoon and milk the cow before he could do anything else. But um, as far as eating, we ate from the grocery stores. Okay. Uh, a couple more things on the food. The students, of course, ate, the, the sorority guys ate in the dorm, at, at the sorority houses, and the women ate at the quadrangle, uh, and, and they had to buy the meal ticket if they were in the quadrangle, so they had a captive audience there. And then the boarding houses uh, were tremendously popular until automobiles got here and, and people were able to scatter all over the place to, to eat. But one of the places that uh, we haven't mentioned is the drugstores. In the drugstore, Markle's was mentioned, and Markle's probably had more volume than any of the other stores, but an awful lot of Markle's volumes were, were, were in milkshakes and uh, ice cream products uh, and, and uh, foot-long 
They had a foot long hot dog. And uh, uh, we had lips constructs. Yes, we had, <laughs> we did. And we had tumors. We had, we had, well, we started out, we had tumors and lips, Benson's. And Benson's was kind of, you know, was that a drugstore or just a sandwich shop? But anyhow, it was there and I worked there. And then we had Lipscomb's. And then we had Wright's. And finally, Wright's moved down the bottom of the hill. And then across the street, we had Bain's. And then around Magnolia, we had Markle's. We had six drug stores in this town. And students, uh, a lot of the students kind of lived on sandwiches and, and uh, Cokes. And, and the grill, of course, the grill would be packed between class from 9 to noon. And I'm not going to say it's because it was air conditioned. But they sold an awful lot of nickel cups of coffee and an awful lot of nickel coats in there. With, and the students would sit there for an hour between class and talk and visit and everything and drink a Coke. Maybe not tip at all, probably not. So, okay. And as our, our last topic, too, um, we wanted to talk a little bit about the, the school system. Um, obviously, uh, as many of you well know, Auburn City Schools are known as some of the best schools in the state and nation. Were they always that way? Um, what was it like uh, going to class and from elementary school on to high school? Just tell us a little bit about that and uh, maybe some, some stories that you have about being in class or being in school. Ms. Williams, I'll let you start We had a good school system. It was the Lee County system. It was not the city of Auburn until, I believe, in the 60s. Is that right? No, 62. it was 50. Early, 50. It was early. 62. 62. I started teaching in 100 and 62. When was that? What year? In 60, 62. 62. 62. It became a city system. So we were the county system and known as Lee County High School for the entire time I was in school. Uh, we had a good system. We had good teachers. They were, Carolyn mentioned our first grade teacher was Miss Dugan. Um, you wouldn't have realized what a good teacher she was until you talked to some of us that were in her class. Uh, she looked like she um, probably worked in a mill. She wore cotton stockings, a cotton dress, tennis shoes, and pulled her hair back with a silver clamp but she tutored the uh, college boys in advanced math, trigonometry, and uh, those things. She was very smart, but we all loved her. Um, I think we had good teachers all the way through. What do you think? We did. We had good teachers. Did you have any stuff with that? No, I came in the seventh grade. I've got some stuff on And Ms. Duggar rode a bicycle to school. Yeah. yeah. She also made a citizen's arrest of, of uh, David Housel for, for parking at the post office. David got out and ran in, just left his car there and ran in to do something and came right back. She, she came by on her bicycle and made a citizen's arrest of David. And I thought that was pretty good. Uh, I don't, I've, got, I've got something that, that uh, maybe this will go over like a lead balloon, but... Uh, uh, I want to talk about Lucille Rhodes. Yes. Uh, seventh grade, first day of class, Miss Lucille Rhodes uh, showed up. She was new, she was a homeroom teacher. And uh, she brought with her a reputation, nobody knew her, but she brought with her a reputation of being tough. Uh, probably in her late 30s, mid to late 30s. And uh, for, to this 11 year old, she was a very attractive woman. Uh, during the first day, day one, Miss Rhodes uh, called out my name, and, and I'm from Oregon. He kind of took me off guard, and I said, huh? And I could see the whole class. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just in unison. And I knew huh was not the right word to have said. So, so she tried again, and I said, uh, uh, what? And now she was on her feet behind the desk. And little boy, come here to me. I got up and went up. And I was a little boy, and I went to her. And uh, I was there beside her and in a flash. And I had never heard the word ma'am used uh, as, as, as a substitute for what? In Oregon, they didn't use it. 
And they said, what? And they didn't say, huh? They said, what? So I never heard it. And uh, uh, I didn't heard it as a response. Well, well, she didn't know that, of course. And so she, she said, uh, uh, Jack Sims? And I said, yes. Thinking I was doing it. And she said, yes, what? And uh, I'm, you know, I didn't know what I was supposed to say. <laughs> so then she smiled and she went back to her seat and she said, uh, all right, we'll see you after school and we'll teach you what you were to say. <laughs> and later I wrote ma'am and yes ma'am on the blackboard a hundred times each. <laughs> <laughs> but, but she did let me explain and I think she understood and I think she believed me. And, and I, I worked real hard then to, to be a yes, ma a yes ma'am and a yes sir person to learn Southern. And the next day everything went well till after lunch. <laughs> And when I again heard from Miss Rose, Jack Sims, yes, ma'am. I replied, you know, kind of, kind of proud of myself. And she says, please come up here and, and write the name of the city and state where you came from uh, up on the blackboard for us. And so I wrote Corvallis, Oregon. That's where I, where I had lived on the board. And I used Oregon, I used the, the R like this rather than the block R, you know. And in Corvallis, I used the R. And, uh, and she asked the class, she says, anybody, in, she circled them, says, anybody in the class use one of those R's? And no hands went up, she said. Uh, she told me that uh, this was not the accepted form. And I told her, I said, well, I learned the Palmer method. <laughs> <laughs> and the Palmer method, you use this R. And uh, anyhow, after class, I think it was 150 times I wrote for Alice <laughs> Oregon. But that woman put me under her thumb the first day. And she was my English teacher in the sixth grade and the seventh. And I went into eighth grade. She was my English teacher in the eighth and the ninth. And I went in the tenth, and she was my English teacher in the eleventh and twelfth. I had her six years. Uh, she was tough, and she was demanding. Occasionally thought she was wrong, but I, I think she was the best teacher I ever had in school. Uh, I expressed my appreciation to her a whole lot of times after I, I got out, and, and she, was, uh, she was one of the most loved we had. And, and it, the, the kids that, that she was toughest with liked her the most, I think. She required a lot of memory work. Oh, yeah. And many of the things I had to learn from Miss Rhodes have meant a great deal to me throughout my life. Never shake thy gory locks at me, thou canst not say I did it. That was one of her yeah. favorites. That was Shakespeare. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But the school, the school had, uh, uh, as all of you went there, remember, they had sawdust that had oil in it. And when it came time to sweep the floors, they just threw out some sawdust and there were oily floors and they squeaked even with the oil, but uh, the school was well kept and the, the, and the classrooms were, you know, they were very solid. I, I thought we had a good school and I, I thought the teachers, I didn't work very hard in high school at all, but I worked for Miss Rose, but I thought, uh, I thought the teachers were good. <laughs>